The first time that I can recall watching a movie that was audibly mocked by the audience during and immediately after the film was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I saw a lot of movies at around that time, but I remember that experience kinda well because it was a lot of fun, but somehow really uncomfortable at the same time. I was with my friends at the time and we, as well as most of the other filmgoers, quickly adjusted to the film's poor quality by enjoying the spectacle of it rather than treating its narrative as if it had any merit. However, there were people who were legitimately engrossed in it, or were trying to be, so you can imagine the awkwardness when a tragic moment got a reaction of both gasps of sadness as well as laughter and snorts of contempt. I tell you this story from years ago because I think I relived it, this time watching Aquaman. When this movie's final lines were read and the title card popped up, signaling the end of the film, a large portion of the crowd just burst out in hysterical laughter. I'm not making this up. I genuinely felt bad, like we had all just bullied the artist behind it in their presence. Even though they were thousands of miles away, couldn't hear us and probably wouldn't care anyway. So now that I've made the comparison between Aquaman and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, you might have concluded that the two are similar in quality. If you did, you couldn't be more mistaken. Without a shadow of a doubt, Aquaman is several leagues beyond anything Spider-Man could ever hope to be. The comparison I made between my movie experiences only holds up when speaking of the tone and rather fantastical elements. Aquaman is a far superior film in every other way, and even in its more pathetic areas, it does succeed in some ways. And that's how I will structure this review. First, I'll address the plot, no specific details of course, the characters, and finally the world. Then I will go everything that was good and not so good in the previously mentioned categories. As a side note, take notice that I didn't say what I liked and didn't like. There will be some of that in this review of course, but for the most part, my critique will mostly be a matter of fact, not of opinion. So, the obvious place to begin when discussing story is the beginning. And for some reason Aquaman decided it needed to begin three times. I understand that there is probably some definition for an opening sequence that would technically negate this statement, but each of the three scenes occurs completely independent of one another, exists as a sort of context for the story, and would be fine as an opener if the other two were omitted. This problem only gets worse when considering that only two of these scenes is actually setting up essential plot elements. What I'm trying to say is that the first 20 minutes ends up feeling a little pointless and certainly disjointed. If I had the position of editing the script, I would have cut two of the openers and condensed the initial backstory. As a whole, the plot is rather basic, which isn't a bad thing. It's the standard hero story, and from what I could gather, it seems to be heavily inspired by Greek mythology. Not just in the mythological elements, of course, but in the story structure as well. If you've read the Iliad and the Odyssey, or something along those lines, you're bound to notice the similarities, of which are a central MacGuffin and the journey and growth the hero goes through to obtain it. Think of the Golden Fleece, or Medusa's Head, for example. Adventure stories are a personal favorite of mine, so the most enjoyable parts of the film were easily the portions dedicated to exploring ancient underground ruins solving riddles with clues located on completely opposing sides of the globe, and braving uncharted waters. By the way, have I told you how much I love Zelda? Anyway, the movie dedicates an enormous amount of time to just adventuring, cutting back every so often to the real world and what the side characters are up to, to keep a good sense of peril. This is time well spent, and honestly I couldn't have been any more satisfied with it. I've actually been writing a story of my own for a while now that has a similar appeal. I think you get it, this movie did well in capturing the wonderful sense of adventure. But the plot isn't perfect, there are certainly a lot of specifics that I could point out, but to save time and interest, basically the story is attempting to be too grand while still being grounded or insulated at the same time. What I mean by this is the story sets up the consequences of our heroes and villains actions to be planetary in scope, but then never actually takes the time to address how the world is being affected. For example, near the beginning there's a short montage of a bunch of different news sources covering a major event, and a few voices from the media are given, but after that point, the only perspectives we are allowed to hear are that of our main characters, which in turn shrinks the scope of the movie. It starts off feeling like a very cataclysmic ordeal, but ends up feeling like a small affair even though the stakes are very high. And finally, yes, 
just like every other DC movie, there is a very big final epic cool superhero smackdown totally not drawn out final battle that happens at the end. Fortunately, I did feel like the intensity was building sufficiently beforehand, so a final battle did feel warranted. It doesn't go on for too long either. I feel as though I've discussed this aspect sufficiently enough. I'm still kinda new to how this thing works so if anything felt like it was lacking, just let me know. The next major portion I want to focus on are the characters. Right off the bat, I should say I don't know any of the actors' names, and I also don't know the names of the characters they play. I could look that sort of thing up, but I think it's rather telling that the whole movie went by and the only character's name I know is Aquaman's. Which is kind of funny. At the end, a character refers to Aquaman as Arthur, and I was a little confused because he doesn't really look like an Arthur, and I don't recall anyone calling him that earlier, so I was just kind of left realizing Aquaman's real name is Arthur at the very end of the story. Regardless of that fact, everybody did an excellent job playing their parts and everybody was well cast. Aquaman in particular was exceptionally strong. He really does feel like the definitive version of the character. I suppose now is a good time as ever to say that I appreciated the arcs that most characters went through. Nearly all of the characters developed to some degree, and those changes aren't glossed over, they're very strongly depicted. Which is a good change considering DC has a pretty bad track record of glossing over motivations and personalities with their characters. Take Batman and Superman for example. The villain, even though he's kind of just a generic looking pasty white guy, which DC really loves for their villains for some reason, has a level of nuance I wasn't expecting. There's a reveal in the later half of the story where his perspective is given, and our preconceived perceptions of him are forced to change. The entire time we're told of this event the villain took part in, and that serves as the reason for Aquaman's hatred towards the villain. But then it's revealed that the villain despises Aquaman for the same event, because he was also responsible. It's a nice twist that doesn't come across as forced and also wasn't too predictable at the same time. But there are actually two antagonists in the story. The one I just described was the final boss and the main driving force behind the plot, but there is also a second villain that plays a large role. Black Manta, as he's called in the movie, was the only character from the comics that I was familiar with, so he's the only character that I can judge his movie counterpart against his original comic book one. And I noticed a few things. I'm not too familiar with Black Manta, but I know that in the comics his motivations for being evil stemmed from racial issues. That wasn't anywhere in this movie, and I am kinda okay with it, because I'm not sure if this movie, as busy as it already is, could have managed to fit such heavy themes into what is essentially a side villain. If he was the main villain of the story and everything centered around him, then the change in his motivations would have certainly been a letdown. But that's not to say his new motivations are really great either. They're really weak. It's a standard revenge storyline, and as a side, I am really not fond of revenge stories. They're always so bland and lack any depth. I think this is because it's just all too easy for writers to just skip the task of developing a character with understandable motivations, which takes time and effort, by saying, hey, they want revenge, and that's why they do everything they do. It feels really cheap, and it's honestly just an excuse to not take the time to give a character a real story. And to make things worse, Black Manta has almost no impact on the overall plot. Basically, he existed so that there could be a cool action sequence about halfway in the movie, and then from there on he's just not a part of the story anymore. Like, the movie tries to justify this by having Aquaman learn from his mistake with Manta and change his actions against the main villain, which is nice, but it was still lacking because Manta's story was just left on hold. If he had taken part in the final battle and had some character change, it would have been justified, but the way it is now with the movie having spent such a ridiculous amount of time setting up Manta's revenge story, just to have him literally disappear is so bad. And I know why they did this, they need something for Aquaman to do in a potential sequel. And some people might be fine with that sort of thing, but you know what? I'm sick of watching movies that intentionally leave themselves unfinished for the sake of potential future installments. Uh, the last thing there is to talk about are the visuals. Which is nice for me because I get to end this review on a positive note. Going in hand with what I said earlier about this movie having a great sense of adventure, the environments that are explored are just beautiful. And I'm not just referring to their color or how realistic they look. 
but the detail and attention put into the culture of each location. When Aquaman and his girlfriend explore the underground ruins, it's not just a bunch of boulders stacked on one another in a cave, but intentionally designed architecture filled with odd symbols, dilapidated tools, and the humble remains of art that displays not just a great set piece, but a place that truly feels like people could have lived in at one point. It feels like a place that couldn't have been found anywhere else but where it was. What I'm trying to say is that the world Aquaman inhabits and explores is real. Even though I kind of ignored it earlier, I should discuss the color. It's, of course it's really blue most of the time, as a good chunk of the movie occurs underwater, but it's also really red and hot. Aquaman finally, and thankfully, breaks the trend DC had fallen into, where every movie had to be a dull blue, which is the most lifeless color palette imaginable. Take Aquaman's girlfriend's hair, for example. That's the most vibrant red I think I've seen in any DC movie. It's refreshing, trust me. And the last thing I should mention is that there is quite an abundance of stylistically bold boarding going on. I found that it was especially present and effective during the more intense sequences. For example, there's a scene where Aquaman and his girlfriend are stuck on a dinghy in the middle of the ocean during a stormy night. That whole sequence was pretty genuinely terrifying. Apparently James Wan, the director of Aquaman, is kind of known for his horror movies. I think I can believe it. So regardless of the fact that people openly made fun of it at the theater, my final rating for Aquaman would be a 6 out of 10. Definitely above average, but still suffers from a lot of problems, just a few of which I mentioned in this review. For me, the biggest issue was the disconnect between Aquaman and his world. The story was trying to be way too large in scope, while still being stuck on the perspectives of just a few select characters. I wouldn't see it again, but if you haven't seen it yet, it might be worth a watch.